Considering their importance, we should review the meaning of base tables and navigations of Genexus objects to smart devices. Here we have an example where, from a panel for smart devices, Ask Country, we select a country, for example, Uruguay, through a dynamic combo box. And we call another panel for smart devices that'll show us the country's name and all the speakers corresponding to that country grouped by conference. It'll also show us a button that will enable us to view the country's information calling the detail of the corresponding work with. The application bar provides a button to add a speaker from that country, and also, for each speaker on the list, grouped by conference, and we will be able to view the information relative to that conference. Here we can see that only those presented on the list appear, but not these two, because these two will belong to other countries. United States of America, and the United States of America as well. When we analyze this panel, we will find it consists of a fixed part containing the name of that country, the button to view it, and the add button in the application bar to add a new speaker. And it'll also consist of a variable part corresponding to the grid. This grid will be similar to the list grid of the work width of speakers. We should note that even by tapping, we will also have the chance to see a portion of the resume as we did before. And by tapping on this image, and going to the speaker's detail, we will see some differences, like this button, and the fact that its base table will no longer be the speaker's tables. It'll now have to be the table of speakers relating to the conferences. Let's see this in Genexus. Here we have the first panel, Ask Country, requesting the user to enter a country. We can see that we have a country variable that we define on the basis of the country ID attribute. We've modified its control type and made it a dynamic combo box whose values are taken from country ID and whose descriptions correspond to the country name attribute. Then we have the button, which invokes the other panel for smart devices to which we are passing that country ID. This is the panel. If we go to the rules, we will see that the value is received by parameter in the country ID attribute. If we go to the layout, we will see the country name attribute in the fixed part. The view button, which invokes the work with devices country, country level, detail, passing the country ID by parameter. Then we have the application bar, the add button, which we can see is using a speaker variable corresponding to the speaker business component. It assigns the corresponding country ID received by parameter, and it invokes the detail of the work with device's speaker passing that business component so the country is initialized. Then we have the grid that will have its own base table, which is independent from the base table of the fixed part. We should remember that this is a specificity of smart device objects. The fixed part and the grid define independent navigations, each having its own base table. This leads to a significant difference with web panels. So, in smart devices, 
we have that the refresh event navigates the base table of the fixed part and that the load event navigates the base table corresponding to the grid. Prior to analyzing the grid, we should think about how to determine the base table of the fixed part of this panel. The attributes belonging to the fixed part must be taken into account. In this case, it's just country name, along with all the attributes belonging to the events relative to the fixed part. In this case, the view and the add that are outside of for each command. Therefore, in our case, this country ID attribute and this other one here, also country ID, along with the attribute of the fixed part of the layout, will be determining the base table of the fixed part. If we had programmed the refresh event, which we have not, then the attributes appearing there and not inside of for each would also take part in determining the base table of this fixed part. This is why the base table will then be country. To confirm it, we should look at the navigation list. When we search for the data provider corresponding to the fixed part, we will see that in fact it's navigating the country table and keeping the corresponding country received by parameter. We must also see which is the base table of the grid. Of course that the attributes belonging to the grid will participate. In this case, speaker image, speaker full name, and country name, in addition to those in the other layout. And we don't have any more because this is a variable. The attributes inside the load event outside the for each. And here we have again speaker full name and speaker CV mini, the resume, is here, and also here and here. And we also have the event associated with this image. and also the event associated with the view session button with this image loaded. If we go to the events, the first one using the speaker ID attribute, and then the second one using the session ID attribute, we can see that the first one calls the detail of the work with device's speaker and passes that speaker and the second one calls the detail of the work width of sessions, passing it the session ID. So, if we take a look at the attributes we have again, session ID, speaker full name, speaker CV mini, speaker ID, and which are repeated here, what will be the base table of that grid? The presence of session ID in this event associated with the grid will prevent speaker from being the base table of this grid. The base table will be session speaker. And we'd also mentioned in the base CRM property that level of the session transaction. And inside the order, which will also be involved in determining the base table of the grid, the session name attribute will appear because we want to break the information by session name. Of course, the attributes appearing in the search will also be involved, as well as those that might appear in the conditions, provided that the conditions have been programmed. If we now look at the navigation of the data provider corresponding to the grid, we will see that it is in fact doing a for each to session speakers. And it filters by country. Which country? The one received by parameter. We should remember that navigations of the fixed part and grid are independent, and that no filters are automatically established between them. 
What causes the filtering by country ID in the first navigation corresponding to the fixed part, as well as the filtering by country ID in the grid, is that the parameter received in the country ID attribute and not the fact that the base tables are related. We can see that country is included in the extended table of session speakers. However, this relation is not considered. To sum up what the demo has shown, fixed part and grid each have their own base table and the navigations for each are defined independently. The attributes that determine the form's base table are the attributes included in the fixed part of the layout, in our case, country name, the attributes referenced in the general conditions, tab conditions, in our case, there's none, the attributes appearing in the form's events outside for each commands, that is, those in the refresh, and events associated with controls of the fixed part of the form, in our case, the view button and the application bar button, the add button. Therefore, the base table in our case will be country. Again, contrary to the case of web panels, the refresh event here relates to the navigation of the form's base table. So, it's like the load event, but for navigating a different table. Obviously, the grid's information may not be accessed inside the refresh event. As in all cases of implicit tables, when the events include a for each, the base table will be considered a for each nested in the implied. The attributes that will determine the grid's base table are the attributes included in the grid, the attributes referenced in the order, the search, the advanced search, and the conditions in the grid, and those of the conditions tab, general, the attributes appearing in the grid's events outside for each commands, that is, those in the load, and in events associated with controls inside the grid. In our case, the one of the view session event and the tap on the image in the other layout. When the grid's base TRN property has been set up as new, added in evolution 3, the base table originates here, but the attributes mentioned previously must belong to its extended table for everything to be well defined. Therefore, in our example, the base table will be session speakers. Everything mentioned applies to the load. Therefore, the base tables that Genexus will find in this case will be, for the form, country, and for the grid, session speakers. Despite of their indirect relation 1 to n, navigations are independent by default. This means that they're like a pair of parallel for eaches that are not nested. If we want to relate the navigations, we must do it explicitly. In this example, it'll be because we're receiving a parameter attribute. Note that, since the fixed part must recover a single record, for the panel to be well designed, it must be possible to filter the corresponding country base table in order to recover the record desired. This will take place automatically because we are receiving by parameter in the country ID attribute. Also, since the grid navigates the session speakers table that has country ID in its extended table, the filter will also be done on this table and only the session speakers from that country will be shown. All of this functions exactly the same in Evolution 2, where the only difference is that the data group was added.